students and faculty to work with innovative ideas and transform the prototype. The institution's innovation council was constituted in Dempe College in the year 2019. And since then, with a very energetic and enthusiastic IIC team of faculty members and students, we have received a four-star rating from MHRD for the academic year 2019-20. We stand third in the state of Goa and 40th in the Western region zone. Under the ages of IIC, we have been organizing several sessions, workshops relating to entrepreneurship, product design, innovative models, and research. We also encourage the students to participate in the series. Thank you. Thanks, Deepa, for the brief introduction of IIC. Now, with a great sense of pride, I introduce today's speaker for this session, Mr. Soham Naik, a SYBAC biotechnology student of Dempe College of Arts and Science and also a student member of IIC. Mr. Soham Naik is actively engaged in innovations, designing, prototype building, and many collaborations. He has won several prizes at the college level as well as at the state level competitions. In this session, he'll be talking on his journey as a student to an entrepreneur. I now request Mr. Soham Naik to take over the session. Thank you. Thank you, Purnima, ma'am and uh, uh, Deepa ma'am for the lovely introduction and I will now st start to present. Uh, so now I'll start uh, talking about my story of innovation. So in, in I am currently a SYBSC biotechnology student and interested in computational biology, bioengineering, and startups. I dream of building a unicorn startup someday, which is a billion dollar startup, a valuation of billion dollar in future someday. And now I'll start what's what's my notion of, about innovation is. Uh, what I think innovation is, is the process of turning a new idea into something practical, affordable, and reliable that people will want to use. It's the process of driving down the price and driving up the reliability and the efficiency of the idea or the product. Uh, it's, it's also a process of persuading other people to adopt it too. So, in this, basically, we uh, try to build something which other people will use. So it's like keeping your idea alive for a longer term. You're trying to uh, understand others' view about your idea through it, through innovation. So the first step of uh, building anything innovative or uh, trying to uh, build something is to try to find your niche. Niche is basically a comfort area, area in which you are comfortable to do work in, but not uh, consider it uh, as a, a comfort zone where you can just slack and uh, be uh, cool about it. It's like an area of your interest where you f enjoy doing your work. So my journey started in my eighth grade where a friend of mine who used to go to robotics classes introduced to me a, to a microcontroller and electronics called as Arduino. That piece of Arduino, it's a microcontroller, a, a chip-like board, changed my view about how tech can influence others. It uh, showed me how we can write a code on a computer and uh, it can uh, help you do various kinds of things. And from the, that day onwards, from my eighth grade onward, it opened a pathway to, to the world of computer science and electronics. And from that time onwards, I started uh, taking keen interest in understanding how this technology works. 
how how i can build things how i can write code which will help me uh, help my uh, hardware do a certain function or certain algorithm will uh, cert- write a certain algorithm which will solve a problem from that time onwards till my 12th standard i was and still i am uh, influenced with the tech technological past thank to that one friend who introduced me to the tech then in my 11th and 12th grade i took science so in science uh, one class which introduced me uh, was uh, had a huge influence thanks to my biology teacher uh, was uh, is biology and uh, during that class we had a uh, a club called as cube so cl- cube was something uh, uh, like extra curricular part of our classes we used to uh, uh, discuss about drosophilas which are fru- fruit flies and uh, how to prepare cultures at 11th and 12th grade so during that time i came i was really got fascinated about the idea how this tiny creatures called as fruit flies or drosophilas can have uh, a huge impact on research and uh, uh, other related field how this drosophilas are used in neuro degenerative disease uh, research work i met various people during that time who were working with drosophilas and uh, do neuro degenerative diseases like Al- alzheimer and hunting's disease and from that time i was like i knew that i would like to do something in biology and uh, influ- using the interest of tech and then i uh, joined uh, bsc biotech and the third uh, niche which i'm uh, good and comfortable is the startup the business ecosystem so this played a factor uh, in thinking uh, or like in form of business how i can uh, turn my projects or uh, work into something scalable which other people can use uh startup i got into this startup ecosystem and understanding about startups through social media platform called twitter where i found various uh, twitter uh, various startup owners founders very active on twitter talking about their startup building in public how they started from 0 to 1 and how they are doing right now i and from that point onwards i thought i would like to use uh, th- uh, technology and biology and scale it and make a business out of it uh, which is currently my focus where i'm trying to build something which uses computational uh, power, uh, computational thinking and uh, biology to to solve biologist problem so now we'll go to the next next slide the this is the arduino board which started my journey of uh, Uh, creating innovation and tech small board but has it's a very versatile board like uh, made me change from like a uh, uh, average student to uh, like very keen interested uh, student with a scientific temper increased my scientific temper for certain see then next pro- next uh, slide we'll talk about the problems we face while trying to innovate or trying to build something these are very common problems but faced by all of us so the first problem is the imposter syndrome imposter syndrome refers to an internal experience of believing that you are not as competent as others perceive you to be so i i face uh, imposter syndrome very uh, very much because i used to think i am not as good as others which uh, led me to uh, not participate in certain competition which uh, led led me to not receive the feedback which i could have got on my projects or uh, other opportunities which could i could have uh, landed upon at a very young age i always used to think that uh, i am not as good as my peers uh, but a- as soon as i understood my problem uh, i tried to face it i started to participating in competitions as many as possible so as i participated in competition it also opened a, uh, a network or network where i could connect with various people i could uh, get uh, various outputs from them 
it also led me it also gave me feedback about my uh, projects uh, helped me understood where i'm lacking help me improvise on my project and uh, to and help me develop it in a much better way so the next time i could be a victorious in any competition i go now we'll talk about the second problem which is procrastination procrastination is a problem which every one of us face and even today even i tend to procrastinate even after having a routine of work procrastination is like uh, we tend to give a uh, give up a work for tomorrow like uh, we'll do it like uh, kal karenge abhi time hai and we tend to uh, waste a lot of time procrastinating so uh, th this was the second problem which we uh, student face a lot we tend to procrastinate our journal writing and it waste of, we are procrastinating but we are giving our something very something very valuable no, known as time and we as we all know time is equals to money so we are literally giving up our uh, wealth in terms of time which which is very precious so i tend to solve it by uh, create, sticking sticking to my routine where i divide everything with respect to my project work and uh, with my academics so now what are the solution to this problems how do i come come up with a solution for this problem so the solution first solution is whatever you are learning try to leverage it in any innovation process learning matters but trying to leverage what you have learned is important we accumulate knowledge in our whole academic life but we uh, tend to give up on the opportunities where we can lev leverage it we learn so many theories but we never see them in working which is a downside so in order to do this process try to gain as many or uh, Uh, try to get uh, into opportunities where you can leverage what you have learned so in uh, what i have tried to uh, leverage how my learning is in this way so i read about bioreactors and how they work so during my first semester there was a workshop uh, technical hands on workshop where we got to use the small scale bioreactors so uh, during that time whatever i had learned i got to uh, use it and see how it works how this bioreactor worked and that's how i leveraged the uh, knowledge about bioreactors the second uh, second picture the green color weird looking uh, petri plate is the uh, is a bacteria which uh, was not growing uh, but uh, i it was a theory of uh, molecular biology where uh, we talk about uh, take taking a gene of growing gene and putting it into a non uh, non growing bacteria to make it grow so i went to iser pune during my winter break uh, in first semester to know how how do you do this like how do you make this bacteria grow how do you take this gene from one thing and put it in another and when i did this experiment it was like i felt uh, it was a crazy thing to do such thing like it's not glowing but now it's it has a ability to glow told uh, opened a uh, opened a new, uh, new possibilities of beliefs where i could think about various thing about using such techniques and the third picture which is in clear but it's a video it it's about my two, in 12th grade biology we had to come up with a project so in that project i worked on drosophila in uh, how in its uh, ability and its uh, and the effect of ultraviolet radiation and magnetic resonance so i studied how drosophila reacts to uh, the uh, to uv lights and uh, magnetism how it goes and that's how i uh, whatever i used to study uh, during extra sitting hours about drosophila and uh, other related things to drosophila was leveraged during this time uh, by working on a real project of drosophila now the this uh, solution is very cliche but yeah keeping a positive mindset really helps 
we should trust in ourselves and our abilities because uh, we tend to uh, overweight the opinions of others that we are not good which uh, tends to hinder our growth we should always keep a positive mindset towards ourselves our ability we should trust our abilities writing a crappy code right now may, may be bad but we can always improvise making a mistake uh, in a practical is just a setback but you can always come uh, you can always uh, overcome those setbacks you can always learn there's always time to learn and the my next solution is uh, this is a very uh, uh, like uh, thinking process which I use a lot whenever I try to build something. Uh, it's it's called first principle thinking. Uh, it's a problem solving technique that requires you to break down a complex problem into most uh, basic or foundational elements. So what the, what it means can be explained uh, nicely with Elon's uh, uh, example and how he built the SpaceX the rocket uh, rocket company or startup so the complex problem which elon faced was sending uh, rockets on mars so the first step was to acquire a rocket but buying a rocket for 65 million dollar was objectionable because it's a huge amount to pay and what if we fail which he really did when he tried it for the first time so he turned to the first principle thinking method so in this method, he started to ask asking question and big, he broke down the obtaining a rocket into fundamental questions like what is a rocket made up of? And the answer to that was aerospace uh, grade aluminum alloys, titanium, copper and carbon fiber. The next question he came across, what is the value of this material in an open market? So when he researched about it, he found it, it's the 2% of a typical rocket price, which is a crazy a crazy amount he is saying saving here so he said he decided he will build his own rocket company which is spacex now we can see spacex falcon rocket going into space and it's working with nasa right now which is really crazy because starting from a small thing now he's going to a bigger projects similarly the second uh, way of thinking uh, the second example is the founder of buzzfeed BuzzFeed is the social media platform which every teenagers we know about it. Uh, it's a platform uh, where uh, you find uh, various articles, puzzles, games, uh, which uh, we teenagers like to play or go through it. So how uh, he wanted to build a platform for st stories and media content. But when he uh, thought about it, it was like a platform everyone else is making, like Medium, or WordPress website. So when he broke down into, uh, he, when he used first principle thinking, he came about, how do I do this? So during that process, he came up with the idea of acquiring maximum, uh, uh, distrib maximum distribution amongst uh, youth. So how he'll distribute it among youth? I will make uh, uh, small, uh, small, short uh, snippets uh, of uh, articles, and how will it be uh, go match with the attention span of the teenagers? He tried to understand the psychology and came up with BuzzFeed, which is booming right now in the social media field in terms of uh, entertainment ar and articles. Uh, what what makes, uh, in my opinion, I use uh, uh, first principle thinking a lot. And what makes uh, this uh, method different than the normal way of thinking, which we use, is the analogical by making analogies. Analogies are beneficial, but uh, the thing with analogies is we tend to use certain uh, certain ideologies which are already used. We try to compare with them and think about it. But uh, when we use first principle thinking. We tend to uh, clear the clutter and we try to go deep down and try to get the foundational elements which are uh, like to know the basic fundamental truth about some stuff. It's a very uh, mentally heavy process but it's a good method because you tend to get know your knowledge gaps where you lack about it. And uh, 
it helps you to build something uh, build stuff from ground up now my next solution is play long term games all returns in life whether in wealth relation or knowledge comes from compound interest what does this mean it means uh, let's uh, understand it by a example uh, if you eat something healthy for a day rather than a junk food it won't be uh, uh, necessarily helpful for a day. Uh, but if you do when uh, you just uh, uh, when you try to shift from shift uh, from eating your junk food to healthy from day and then day uh, days turn to week and weeks to month and months to year it does have a uh, impact it does have a huge impact as it's like it start compounding it starts to increase you start to become more and more healthier as you switch your diet for this example we can like you can do 1% 0.2% uh, daily which is like 1% daily can make 37 times better you can write uh, you be, you may be in computer science you may be writing a code which is uh, okay -ish right now can't do much uh, stuff but if you practice it daily you can be better at it we get better as time goes on that's how I try to work in my life. I try to improvise every day 1%. 1% improvement does not seem to be huge in one one day or a week. But in a span of months and years, it's it's a huge improvement. I saw me improving from writing crappy code to writing a code which is uh, uh, deployable in industrial grade to working on projects, biology projects, which were uh, just uh, like small uh, fair projects to projects which can be used in research purposes now the next thing I'll, i'm going to talk about is network network as in try to meet lot lot of people talk to them in the covid times i met uh, uh, it was very uh, difficult to meet people but uh, due to social media i got to meet lots of people on internet and uh, this people, I got on one-on-one -on -one, uh, video call on with them and try to understand what they are, uh, wh what they are learning, how they are learning. I got to learn from. I wanted to know about neuroscience, and there was this one uh, kid, uh, sixteen year old. She knew a lot about neuroscience, and the, the way she explained me uh, helped me understood what are the various things in neuroscience like uh, you can there's no shame in uh, asking people like can you help me i uh, i want to know about it people don't really uh, say that no i won't help you people are ready to help you you just need to go to the platform whichever uh, twitter or uh, instagram and ask them for help that you want to understand this thing try to meet as many people as you can uh, ask them questions how did they do this how are you here? Why? How did you founded this startup? And what was your ideology? How? What is your thinking process? And just keep questioning. Like questioning helps a lot. Uh, and that's that's how networking works. You meet people. You ask questions. If you have something you can share, you can share about it, and learn from others as well as help them learn what you know. Now I'll talk about the opportunities which uh, uh, we have uh, and which I also received where Institutions Innovation Council, which is present in our own campus, which is uh, uh, holding various activities. Students need to participate in that. Uh, and this in Institution Innovation Council it has a connection with Ignite Innovation Hub and CIBA, which are our business uh, accelerators in Goa. So. Uh, uh, if you have an idea uh, or a startup, we can, uh, uh, if it's uh, idea, we can help you develop it into a product level. Then you can approach, the, we'll help you to approach the Ignite, Ignite Innovation Hub or SIBA to make your idea into a product. Your institution Innovation Council also holds 
something called as intellectual property right workshops and guidance uh, these are uh, like patent related uh, workshops which will help to patent your ideas to safeguard them from people who try to steal your ideas basically but yeah do participate in most of the you know, institutions innovation council co competition it helped me a lot uh, during my college uh, first semester and second semester as i got to i got a lot of feedback from students about my project helped me gain more confidence to go to more competitions and develop my product the second uh, the other opportunities are something called as mr mr is a marginal revolution foundation by uh, american economist tyler coweb so in uh, marginal revolution there is something called as emergent venture fellowship so in that fellowship 10 student 10 potential uh, idea uh, idea uh, holding people can get a funding of uh, $10000 if their idea is really great uh, it's uh, it's conducted in cohort based which is 10 student for a certain time and it's not only student uh, teachers or anyone can uh, apply for this if you think your idea is a moonshot which is basically great ideas and you can work with that amount and uh, tyler coeb is a very famous guy he's a american economist as well he has a very great network of people in the startup field and the other communities uh, and, and the other one uh, is the on deck on deck are basically paid fellowships uh, they have various uh, fellowships which are non science based like podcasting podcasting is the new thing which is going on right now people are making podcasts daily and trying to share their knowledge acro across various platform like spotify anchor fm and they you, you should uh, do check out uh, on deck and uh, uh, marginal revolution emergent uh, ventures on deck is for the people who like to talk write is the thing it's a, it's a thing for them and now i'll talk about my role model and the importance of having a role model so i uh, my role model is elon musk i look up to him a lot because he never give gives up like so many rocket launch failures spacex tesla building tesla solar city Neuralink, OpenAI. He never gave up. He just kept go on going. He did not let those fears or fear of failures come come at him. He tried to fight them. He persevered through his journey. So a role model basically helps us to keep us uh, keep us uh, going or look up to. It's a person who can who you can learn, who can idolize. Because it's very important, we get distracted a lot by a lot of people, and having a role model to maybe he's not helping you in person, but his work really does help you. And uh, uh, here, my here are my some uh, achievements, few achievements which I got. I got, in my twelfth grade, I got to be a part of All India Cell Biology Conference uh, held at Bits Goa. Then uh, for an innovation fair uh, in my first semester, a state level fair in innovation, I got the second prize where I competed against engineering student and won. Uh, this was a competition for Tempe innovators. Uh, uh, then I got an opportunity to work in uh, ICER Pune biology lab where I worked uh, on those gene, uh, gene transfer uh, techniques. And uh, in 2020 February, I I won Goa's youngest innovator title, and uh, I won a green business plan organized by Dempe College, and many more. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Deepa Ma'am, uh, Preeti Ma'am, and uh, Purnima Ma'am, and all the IC members to giving me a platform to t talk about my work and how I think our innovation process works as per me I'll, I'll really like to thank you all man thank you with the end of this wonderful session
now the platform is open for the questions so students are invited for the questions students please feel free participants feel free and ask questions and our very own soham will answer If there are any questions, I'm open for those questions. Uh, uh, hello, sir. So how I use Arduino uh, was I worked in uh, uh, on my project on uh, air monitoring. So air monitoring, uh, in the initial uh, stage, I used Arduino as a board with uh, other sensors to understand how air quality works. From uh, that time onwards, uh, I used uh, Arduino is basically like a brain. Uh, it helps the sensors to understand what output input they are getting and try to uh, give me the stats on my uh, electronic device, like laptop. I used to get stats about how uh, what's the concentration of CO2 uh, and other various gases. And it helps me help me in understanding that. From that point onward, I from Arduino, I try to make my own custom boards, uh, custom uh, printed a circuit board for my project. That's how I use Arduino in my project on uh, air quality monitoring. Uh, so is that a good enough answer? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any, any more questions are there? I'm still ready to answer, if any. If there are no more questions, I now request Dr. Ashish Prabhu Kaukar to propose vote of thanks. Thank you, ma'am. First of all, I'd like to congratulate Mr. Soham Nai for uh, his endeavor uh, in uh, starting his entrepreneurship life at such a early age, uh, which will uh, definitely help him to go a long way in his life. And thank you for putting your experiences in such a wonderful presentation form and delivering it in a such a nice way so that we can learn from it. We got very wonderful insight in his journey to be an entrepreneur uh, and from which we can learn, definitely we can learn a lot of things. Uh, we wish him also uh, uh, all the very best for his future journey. Uh, next, I'd like to thank Ms. Deepa Audi and Institute Innovation Council at uh, uh, Dempe College for providing this platform for us to interact. I'd also like to thank the MP College, Principal MP College for all the facilities and support. I'd like to thank MHRD for launching this Institute Innovation Council. I thank Dr. Purnima Ghadi for all the work behind organizing this seminar. And finally, I thank all of you to participate in this seminar. Thank you.